This conference will now be recorded. Labor and vote? Present. Kyle Jigo? Here. Dale Schmidt? Here. Jessica Atkinson? Here. Tracy Fluke? Here. And Annette Ovenger? Here, yep. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and justice for all. Thank you. All right, action on the agenda. Is there anyone that wants to move anything or change anything on the agenda? Otherwise, I'd welcome a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Motion a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Motion carried. Uh, okay, action on the minutes from the April, excuse me, August 16th um, bike pad committee. I found a temp, uh, typo. I figured. <laughs> 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 but it's already been corrected. <laughs> on eight um, B, I think. Eight B, where it states, Luki stated an estimated generated. I should have read estimate. Okay. And it's been edited. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Put it in the phone and we put it in the phone. Yeah. And it changes the whole oh, yeah. story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Any other questions or changes to the minutes? No. All, All right. vote to approve. Come in. Seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, comments from the public. Evidently, I just came from a training session on Friday, so evidently I have to say all of this at the meeting, so I realize there's probably not any um, public here. So I'm just going to read this quick the stuff that's on here. Must be limited to items not on the agenda. Must state name and address. Limited to five minutes. Board's rules to listen and not discuss the item. Personal issues cannot be discussed nor individual's name. And board is not able to take action at this meeting. Is there any comments from the public? No comments from the public. Hey. Okay. Number seven, site plan review. Kyle, anything to share on site? There were three things that came up. <clears throat> One was re there were plans for some townhomes at Alden Station, and they're pretty much individual houses with parking. So I just didn't really just I said we didn't have any comment on that. Okay. We've talked about that before. There are two other things. Uh, the Hardee's on Oneida Street is going to be a Starbucks. Burger King. Burger King. Burger King is going to be a Starbucks. I don't believe it. So. I guess the Hardee's was torn down. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a discussion on the Mission Grill, and both of those properties had bicycle parking in the plan. Okay. So I was, I just told them I was pleased, and we would like it to have be compliant with the guidelines of the bicycle pedestrian and professionals of pedestrian and bike or whatever. APDP, yeah. And and then in the plan it said that the parking would be compatible with village regulations and village parking guidelines. So I looked online and there's a, a master plan for the title town district and the entertainment district, and it says in there that there should be bike parking, but it doesn't really address anything other than bike parking. So I mentioned that to Tracy, and I guess that's on the agenda. Yeah, that's on the agenda, and we'll, we can talk about, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. So the other property I said that was um, Mission, what was mission the other bar property? The Mission Barbecue. Where is that one? It's across from Nativity on Cormier and Dell. That whole complex is going to be torn down and rebuilt. Okay. And that's the first tenant. Okay. Are you sensing that architects are taking into consideration that bike? Um, I mean, it seems I like guess I'm not, not sure. I, I, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but I think that probably is it. You know, I think the architects to... come up with these plans because I don't think the business owners say, oh, we want a bike park. Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. the architects are putting it in. And, and like you say, in the master plan, it, it's, you know, it says that the village wants bicycle parking. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything else, Kyla? Just those three? That would just those three for this. Okay. 
Any other questions for Kyle on anything? Rex, anything? We all have some time to have. All right, so then we'll go to um, I, item 8A action items, signalized intersection analysis summary. Um, Doug is is off today and it's his anniversary, so him and his wife are going to be doing something fun. So hopefully, I'm sure they're having a good time, much better than sitting here and me. So He's, I met with him. He took that over this. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, I can't believe that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I did meet with him to go through everything. Um, you know, the ranking sheet we had seen already. Um, really, what he told me is. The projects 18 through 21, so the ones that are at the bottom of the yellow, right before the orange, are the ones that he has already talked to Martel about, which is a uh, concrete company, and they're going to try to get it done this year, or if they don't get it done this year, they will do it in the spring of next year, and he's going to get the quote and have the money and everything allocated, so if they can't do it this year because of the amount of work they have, then they will do it next can you, spring. Can you say that one more time? Which numbers? It's 18, projects 18 through 21. So the ones that are just oh, above the orange, the yep. four just above the orange. Yep, and the other ones are above the orange. Yep, so those yep. will be done either this fall yet or next spring, depending on when the concrete um, company can get in there and take care of those. So those are most mainly the ones on home brand and kind of in the entertainment district a little bit more. Um, he wanted to double check with everybody that indeed note number one on the top talks about you know kind of our priority that we had talked to him about when we went on our tour. Um, that we felt that everything north of Cormier would be a priority because of the entertainment district and more people walking and biking in that area and he wanted to make sure that indeed that's what we would like to continue with. So I don't know if anyone has any other comments on that or if any changes. Yeah, he wanted. He just wanted to make sure that everyone was in agreement with how things were prioritized. Right. And yeah. that that we say yes, we're good to go with the way it is, or if something needs to be moved up to the top before anything else, now's the time to say it. So he based his criteria. He the way he ranked them on what we had said to him. You know, kind of staying on the northern half yeah, sort of there bikes or pedestrians I guess in that area and bikes. Um, the other projects he has put into the CIP the capital improvement project so he has inserted them into that. Some of them when you get down lower you can see the cost of them is pretty extensive. Um, yeah. You know it's not like we can it'll be part of the general fund it'll probably be part of the CIP um, like have to be bonded for or something so you know when you talk about $40,000 project you know he has to put that under the CIP so um, he has inserted those in and will continue to to look at those and allocate try to get money either the CIP or allocate funding through his operating budget. Um, okay, acronym CIP. C yeah, CIP is a capital improvement project list. So it's money that's set aside yep. for anything he probably of a certain money value. Yeah. Um, let's see what else did he say? So like the forty thousand dollars of Omega Street in Morris, I'm assuming that would be to get it like we're saying, like the full ADA. Yeah. So when we did that walkthrough and I talked a lot about like obviously then we're waiting for that first, like is there something that would cost less that would at least make it accessible temporarily? So is the plan is to just wait until we have the money to do the full ADA? Is that I think that what kind of how they're planning for it? In the general fund budget, they'll try to do these smaller ones. Yep. And then not necessarily saying that, okay, all those small ones are going to be done first and then we'll get to the big ones. Yep. So because it's a different funding source, so maybe as the projects go through, the village board may say, we feel strongly that Cormier, excuse me, um, Oneida and Morris right. needs to be done in 2022. And we're going to include that in 2022 capital budget. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe Doug will look through these and say, you know, I think that this can't wait that long. It needs to be moved out. So he's done that. He's put the projects into the capital budget. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like everything small has to be done before we can do some of the bigger ones. We can do some of the concurrent because it's two different types of funding sources. Right. Okay. So, but instead of doing just because, like, I know that was the conversation that day was we might be able to do more if they're not done to full ADA versus getting less of them done or it'll take longer over time. 
to do that. Yeah. So is that kind of what they've decided then is to do the go full out but do less than no that? No one's decided that. Or is it just gonna, this is all still This is all, this is for you guys to prioritize. How okay. You want done. I, I think it was my understanding that some of them were, and I think we just, we, somebody described them as low hanging fruit. They would be easy and pretty cheap, yeah. relatively cheap, very inexpensive to get them up to standard. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So and those are the twenty five hundred left. Right. So those are maybe the twenty five hundred dollar ones. Right. Yeah. And and there's the money available. You don't have to do special funding to get that. Right. But on the other ones, I think it was my understanding that rather than just do a temporary fix, we're going to wait until we can do it right. Maybe I'm wrong, but that I guess that that's was what I can remember. Yeah. Like we, I remember going back and forth. Yeah, because we talked about it, we kind of decided. Well, let's just. Our stance should be: it needs to be ADA compliant. We have to wait to get it. We could, we'll, we'll wait to get it, but that would be better than just a temporary fix. And and I, my thinking is: if you do a temporary fix, all of a sudden you've taken away some of the urgency to do it right. But maybe that's not correct. But well, if you read most of these, it's trying to work with Brown County at the same time, yeah. so it yeah. has to fit in there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, when you get the jurisdiction, you know, there's two jurisdictions there, it's a county highway, mm -hmm. then you have to work with Brown County, which, you know, you have a funding source, and mm -hmm. so it makes it a little more difficult for the state intersection. It's the same thing. You got to work with the state to try to get that done. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just because the small ones are being done does not preclude the village from doing the big ones. They still could do that and Doug could, you know, look at that in the capital group plan and see about putting some, you know, maybe some in the next year's plan or one in the next year's plan. So I'm assuming depending on what, if there's some changes, we can change the priority next year. He, he just needs yep. to have a, something in front of this. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just start with. And you know, and maybe the yeah. ones that fall into the CIP, we could look at those more closely mm -hmm. and say this these two are important to us we would like to see these done earlier than the later ones you know mm -hmm. and you know kind of prioritize those as well and you know maybe check with doug and see if that would be something that you would like us to do you know mm -hmm. looking at the capital capital projects end of it oh, at least there's a plan I mean, yeah. there may be some smaller ones that we come across to it. We say, yeah. Uh, what all things? Yeah. yeah. So, good for him. Yeah. So, that's really a scoop on that. I don't know, um, Rex, if you have anything else that Doug had shared with you, but that was kind of his. No, nope, just, uh, he just stopped in late last week just to say the big thing is you're either good with us or they need to be reprioritized at this meeting. So, yeah. if we can. Get that plan and then request any dollars which may be available to, for the capital improvement plan for the CIP. But yeah. he's got because we're coming up in the budget season and you know, we'll want to know what do we want to do next year and, and you'll know, see if funding might be available for that. Well, I maybe because I didn't see his capital improvement plan, you know, what he has in there, so maybe it would be good for us to have a chance to see that and see where he has some of the bigger projects placed and then we could. You know, try to prioritize, help them prioritize those as well. Um, you know, to see if, if for us, like an important one is such and such an intersection, and maybe he puts that one next year versus another one. And maybe he's, I'm sure he's prioritized them based on kind of the condition and all of that stuff. So, there are some of these that are the village and the state, and I'm thinking those are going to take more time. Yeah, because the work with the state is mm -hmm. going to take time. Yeah, yeah. So certainly, yeah. I guess Doug probably is much better working at the state than I can ever dream to be. So I would think we give him discretion on those certainly. So any other change or any other questions on that? Otherwise, we'll. Okay. Crazy. 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 Yeah, go ahead, Annette. Um, hi, hi. I was wondering, wondering who did the, um, I'm talking to the vehicle. Who did the, 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 the,
they're very done very well. And a lot of time must have taken to do the signal signalized intersection inventory. Who did that? Um, Doug, they hired heirs and associates that did all the work. So the um, outside contractor did that. Okay, that it looks like a lot of work, but it's nicely yeah. done. Very nicely done. Yep, they did a nice job on it. Yep. Okay, so any comments on that? Do you guys want to run capital steps back? Um, like Rex said, they're probably into the budget They're pretty good, but we could, you know, have them um, at least let us know what he's putting in capital and what, what years he's kind of designating stuff, or do you want it to say we're good with it? We already set our priorities. You implement them. Well, I, you know, I'm happy giving him discretion, but it would be nice if once you get it a little more formalized, maybe he can just let us know, here's what we're going to be doing this year and this year and this year. Okay. I'm sure you can do that because he's, I know he said he's putting out, he showed me parts of it. I think he's yeah. done quite a bit of it already. Okay. Yeah, so. I think there's certainly value in that. Yeah. Us, so. Yeah. At least we know then mm -hmm. what, you know, the priorities are what he's looking at and what we see. So, okay. So I'll, I'll talk to Doug and see if he can bring that back to us then to get to them. All right, anything else on intersections? I think it's a good thing. It's great to have all that information. Um, if the infrastructure budget ever gets um, passed to the federal government, we may have some more money coming down this way. So if we have this done already, we can maybe pick off some of these big ones. And if there's some grants available or something from federal and state government, um, we may be able to move these up much higher on the priority list with that extra funding. So it's great information to have, and it'll help us um, as we move forward. So. Maybe it'll just give us all access to print our own money. And we can just <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? So, so, so I know you guys, I, I need to say this because I know yeah. everyone's been talking about on night end more. According to this chart, it's the last mm -hmm. on the list. So everyone's fine with this being the, the last priority out of all of these projects. Mm -hmm. I know everyone's mentioned, I mean, every, literally everyone here has mentioned that intersection. So I just want to make sure for Doug, you know, that this this is where you because all of these other ones are going to be prioritized before that one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that we should see his capital stuff and see where he's putting it. Because I want well, to talk to him, he's putting it at the bottom right. Well, but when I Look, when I talked to him, I thought he had that one up further, but I don't know for sure because you're looking really quickly at his capital list. So. Well, I have always had some concerns about that intersection where that, yeah. where that, where that, that, that light is placed. You know, but when I look at these other these other intersections, Holmgren Way at Morris, Packerland at West Mason, Formula at Ridge, you know, I don't know that those are any less important than United and Morris, so I'm good with his ranking. Okay. For me, I think the thing with United and Morris is just that's between Packer traffic and all yeah. of that, and everyone that's down there, and then that's the one that has that button that you have to like go into the over gravel and get yeah. to the button, and that's the thing. Like That one's yes. completely inaccessible. Yeah. So. Okay, anything else on that? Otherwise, we will go on and let them know that priorities have set. Or we'd like to see his capital. We just put it in the capital and our information and open there. All right. Anything else on that? Otherwise, we'll move on. I'm just trying to so all the photos. This one says, I'm just thinking, Tom Force is in the United Street. So is that, because I don't see Armed Forces in the United Street as listed here. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to match up there. ranking with photo, but is it not necessarily the same? And I apologize, because I really didn't look at these photos that close when this is sent out of Well. That's a baby so I was going to look at this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just curious if, because if you take the first one, it's Cormier Road and Ashland Avenue. 
So I'm looking for Cormier and Ashland on this list. Number 10. Yeah. That's a 10. Um, I'm seeing number 10 is on Ida Street. Yes. Cormier and Ida Street. Oh, okay. Number 30. Oh, okay. 30 is Ashland Cormier. So I think everyone I looked through, I thought it'd be picture correspondence yes, here. It corresponds to one of those numbers. Yes. It just may not be numerical. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because That's the fine. ranking is a ranking, and those were all, I think those are just an Just the way, yeah. I can match them up. That's yeah. fine. I'll just do that. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, look at it closer, you guys, and if there's something else you need to talk about, we can. But at least Doug has some direction now, and you can go ahead with the smaller ones, and then the bigger ones will keep looking at and see if we can get those done sooner than later. All right. Anything else? Otherwise, we'll move on to 8B, discussion, discussion of possible action on trail plowing costs. And Rex, thank you for getting together yeah. with Apple Valley so quickly. And maybe you can go through it with us. It looks like it's very similar to the Bachelor Trail costs when I compared the two. As far as yeah, so Jerry from Apple Valley, he's the owner. Um, I've worked with him before in a couple different projects, so he was a little concerned about giving pricing mm -hmm. not in a bid format because mm -hmm. then other places can see what he's doing. Yeah. But he did agree to work with us um, so that we would have some kind of an idea. So these are the prices. Again, we, we, we literally drove in the pickup truck down the trail, um, both the Ashwaubs May River Trail and the Packerland Trail. So based off of some of our discussions, these are the hourly rates uh, that we would be charging. Um, now- Isn't that based on per occurrence, not per, hourly? Yes, I'm sorry, per occurrence. So a couple of things here. Um, I, yeah, we, we had another conversation this morning, actually, we've uh, done a follow-up. Um, on average, between 18 and 20 plowable occurrences per year. On average, between 25 and 35, so let's just say 30 times that he needs to go out. So that would mean uh, that the trail might need to be salted, that maybe because of drifting, it needs to be plowed again. So 18 snow occurrences, but probably 30, give or take, times that he would need to go out and do the work. All right? So that, 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 that was just basically a little follow -up. Um, Oh, and with Brown County, um, they give him a, a maximum. We have mm -hmm. 25 or we have $30,000. If it's a bad winter and that amount is used up, they are not plowing for the rest mm -hmm. of the season. They just, they stop. And hopefully it's close enough to spring where, where things just melt, mm -hmm. you know, fast enough. But, but FYI, yeah. that's how Brown County does it. Just because otherwise, so if it's a horrendous winter, you could be just using a ton of money that we don't have. So Brown County has said, you know, they, they agree to these rates and up to a certain dollar amount. And anything, once they hit that dollar amount, the plowing stops and the, the trails are unplowed for the rest of the season. So it's like a not to exceed contract. So mm -hmm. it's this yeah. much money and then once you hit it, then you're done. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said he went down the, down the path with the truck. Yep. From where, from, from the beginning all the way to the end? Did he say anything about, uh, like, say, when he gets to an intersection or when he gets to the to the businesses that are on, you know, on Packerland? I mean, you know, am I gonna am I gonna plow to the left? Am I gonna plow to the yeah, right? We, we, we had a couple the, conversations. What? We had a couple conversations. So we started at uh, at, the, at the Cormier, or what is that true view? Is that view right there where the trail starts? That's right. Yeah. I think that's view. Yeah. So we started at view, and then the first discussion we had um, was just within 
couple hundred yards when we hit 172. So packer land and 172, you've got an island. So you've got a turn lane that goes west because we were going south. So you got a turn lane that goes west on 172. But between a turn lane and the straight lanes, there's a triangular island. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be literally hand shoveled or shoveled differently. The truck will not be able to go up on that because it's so small. Right. So you've got so you've got hand work there. Uh, once we got down to some of the businesses across the street, uh, there is so some, south of 172. South of 172. Okay. Um, he said, well, obviously, he said for the first couple of snows, it won't be an issue if they're not too bad. He said, but eventually we'll need to come in with a payloader and, and take snow away. He said, that won't be an issue. I mean, he's charging us for us. He's charging, <laughs> he's charging it. He was original. Did he say but, but, but we just need to make sure we have a place for him to dump it. That was the big thing with the snow. He said, it's no issue taking the snow away. And that's what I think some of these rates are. Additional hour rates for the industrial loader with the bucket, the quad dump, that would be taking the snow away. Okay, and, and but this, but that just means that we have to have a place to dump the snow. That's the challenge for, for him when on his any of the snowing projects is, is a lot of times places haven't lined up a place to dump the snow. Now we've got a couple of pieces of empty property in the industrial park that certainly may be able to use. So again, I I I I, I pass that information on to you know verbally just in, in discussions with Mary and Joel and just letting them know what's going on. Um, there are a few spots on the trail. If we do the Packerland Trail, where we're going to have to redo a small section of the trail because you have like a uh, a storm sewer cover or a water turnout valve that is popped up, and he said. If if my plow said that, it, it's going to tear it right out. Mm -hmm. So we have to probably saw cut some different sections um, and then and redo those sections so that it would be easy for the plows to you know, not catch anything. Most of those, that's, I can tell you exactly where they are. Too. <laughs> yeah, sure you can. And, and them, the, the biggest issue is actually um, just north of Wabi. Um, there, there's a section, there's a couple of private homes right there on Packer land between the gas station and those private homes. Mm -hmm. There's a real section that there's got to be a storm pipe or something going on under an art underneath the storm sewer or something because there, there's a couple things that have popped up. But it's, it's, it's a little bit wonky. Plus, right in that general area, there's also a guy wire that comes across the trail. And we have mm -hmm. to figure out how to, how to worry because it's holding up or steadying a street light or something. So we have to worry about how to not catch that during the following operation. Once we hit one, once we hit Wabi to the south, there wasn't any issues. Everything was fairly smooth. Did he did he say anything as far as like say if we get three to six inches of snow? Did, I mean, did we did anybody talk to the businesses as far as where is we, where is the snow going to go? Is it going to go? To the left? He, he can push some if it's a light snow. He can push some. There's still some, not in all places, but there's still some right of way between the trail and the curb line, but not on every spot. And that's that's what the that's what the nine foot bucket and the, the quad axle cost. That's where that comes in. Yeah. It's the outer edge charge for the bar. Which makes sense. He's got to bring something special in. Mm -hmm. As well, the Bay River Trail wasn't a real big issue. There's a couple spots where we've had to put some bigger riprap on the east side of the trail just to keep the waves from washing stuff mm -hmm. over the trail all the time. And he said we would literally need to push that back. He said otherwise his trucks would probably catch some of that riprap. Oh, about oh, yeah, yeah. the size of a volleyball. Um, and then and, and just push it. You know what I mean? So uh, when he's lighting it. So we probably have to do some work there before the winters. And then, sorry, and then the last part would be at the marina, right in between the marina and where the old Fratellos is, that stretch is brick. Um, and he says he will not plow that um, to the ground, that he would need to raise his blade an inch or two. He said, otherwise, I'm going to catch those bricks and the whole thing's going to yeah. um, So then we're talking, okay, then what? 
now we've got a trail that has an inch or two of snow, which we can't get the ice because everyone's going to be walking on it. And how do you deal with that? So that one was left undiscussed from that point on. Where does that trail end? Right, right there at Marina Lane. So we can stop it before that. No, no, because no, you can't get out otherwise because it oh, it ties, it ties in. into yeah, the, it, it goes around to Marina. Yeah. And then it goes down to where it comes out on. So property. you enter if you're if you're going south on the trail, you enter at Marina Lane and immediately, well, there's a little concrete connector that we put in a number of years ago. And then immediately on the original trail, it's brick all the way to the, the new the new building that just went up. Oh that oh, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Kind of like right around yeah. there. That concrete connector was for uh, be breaking, wasn't it? Breaking. Uh, <laughs> that was that for wheelchairs. That concrete connector. No, we 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 put that in. We we discussed that at the bike competitive committee probably ten years. We put that in just because people were hopping the curb right there. We would get off. Yeah, we otherwise, you had to cross the grass. Yeah. Otherwise, we had to go all the way down to the clubhouse and then loop around, and, and it didn't make any sense. So we took a parking spot away and just made that connector because that's how people went in and out. That's yeah. what everyone was using. Yeah, there's it is yeah, I remember discussing it. And, yeah, it, 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 took, and it took like a year to get it, but we finally got it. Yep. And I think it was it was a small job, but they're not gonna send a crew out there for a small job that's right. when they get somebody new there, they're gonna do it. It was Yeah, and, and it worked out and that's what everyone's using. Mm -hmm. But but as soon as you get across that connector, which is probably no longer than this table, yeah. it, it's you immediately get the, the bricks. For that north south stretch until you make the curve. All your stretches to break. I'm not familiar with that. What do you think? Jeremy, is there any way you can bring the, the, the brown dog up on the map? Yeah. I'm well familiar with the brick issue because I put it on the side of my sidewalks and driveway. And when you shovel, mm -hmm. you better make sure that we have a reason to do it. It's probably not going to be sinking down. It was aesthetically pleasing at the time when we put it, it in. It looks beautiful. It does look beautiful. It's just not very cool. Don't disagree with it. No. That's what's on my house too. Yeah. Aesthetically <laughs> mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with the cost that he gave us, Rex, did he say like, you know, Ashwame is maybe less of a problem versus Packerland being kind of a harder Clear or did he oh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's, the costs are obviously yeah, there. Right. Do there's it. less worry about, and then probably a lot of that is the moving in the snow and yeah. some of the obstacles and stuff like that. And, and I think on Peckland, you with the issue of the snow from the street being plowed up, thrown on there, so you, you would need more maintenance to, because of that yeah. snow from the street. I mean, once you get further south, you don't have the issue with the snow. Yeah. There's a big buffer in there, and north so, there's a big buffer. So you can see the the red right here. Yep. So this stretch. Oh, okay. So here's the concrete connector. Mm -hmm. This yep. stretch is all brick. Yeah. Once you hit here, there's brick, but there's also concrete. So he would just stay on the concrete portion of it. But this stretch is all brick. I was not aware of that. And that's yeah. that's that's where the issue might be. Who actually owns the marina? The marina is owned privately. The village is responsible for the for the for the piers. The docks, oh. the docks are the villages, or the, excuse me, the docks are private, but the whole concrete pier itself yes. is the village's responsibility. We just we just redid these two two bulbs. Yeah, they look nice. That's they turn out good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. I hear somebody walk for times. That'd be good. Yeah, the other one's the one up most of here, across mm -hmm. from the west side of the highway. Oh, what's it called? Oh, it's Hack. 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 Who owns the clubhouse right there mm -hmm. and runs the marina operation is responsible for the docks. But we are responsible for the piers and the 
I guess, the riprap per se. We, we go in there about once a month and spray for the weeds and stuff like that. And trying to go in there weekly to take care of the goose poop, but the goose poop is yeah. so bad. I mean, you, you can do it in the morning and it's just full again in the afternoon. So, so. Oh, yeah, we just bought sensors that turn on hoses for a cabin. Okay. So I had to warn my grandma not to go to her cabin to look at the lake. So the sensors <laughs> motion and hose just goes off. We'll scare the geese away. Yeah. Also, yeah. Grandma. also soaks grandma. Then buy one of those cannons that goes off <laughs> in the back of the airport. Oh, you go yeah. buy it. Yeah. So anyway, um, Jeremy, I mean, he, he, he was very nice to, to do that. Um, I got yeah, sure. another couple projects for, for us as well. Just kind of worked out. So with the price that he gave us, can we get a total cost for, you know, taking these prices and saying, okay, if we did all 10 miles of trail, what are we looking at for costs? I mean, can we equate this to that well enough? Well, we had, I thought we had, we had decided to do the Packer land and and the Ashwaubamay River Trail is just, just, just a high and the low. That's why yeah. we didn't do anything in between. Right. No, I every, know that. Everything right. else would be in between those two. Right. So what I'm asking is, can we can use this number, use these numbers to be able to get a total that be the village board would say, okay, we we accept that because the village board it was that's not a good number. That's too low. The number that um, we had given originally. So can we take this and equate that and say this is the total that we're looking at based on what Apple Valley has given us? Well, I think what we have to do is go to the village board and say the most expensive one is going to be pack of land. Here are the numbers that we feel. You, you know, you've asked for numbers like here's what's going to cost new pack of land. And we, you know, we think these are good numbers. You ask for new numbers, these are the numbers, here's what it's going to take to do uh the other trail the Ashwabamay river trail do you want us to go if you're good with this we'll get firm bids because this isn't a firm bid we're not going to be able to get firm bids until no. we get no one's going to give it to us approved. until we get it approved no but that's that's what i mean we take these numbers we go to the village board we say here's what's going to do pack land here's what it's going to do Ashwabamay. we think we know we, we think we can figure out what the rest of our are though we don't know for sure yep. we know here and we know here do you as a board are you happy enough with this is it all right if we get bids if you know because i think that's the way we have to do it i don't think if we say well here's what we think it's going to cost we say here's what we know we know this and we know this you know we can kind of extrapolate you can kind of you know you can kind of figure it out right. will it, places bid prior to them no I didn't think so. I mean, no. we're lucky, like Rex said, yep, the yep, gentleman yep. gave us a quote because they don't like to have their numbers out there than every, every other contractor sees them and they can underbid them. So I would ask this committee if they would be comfortable with exactly what Brown County did and set a limit because then the board knows they're only responsible for X number of dollars. Right. No matter what. So yeah, if, I, if I'm looking at the snow removal, I'm just, I'm just going to try and move this along. If I'm looking at the snow removal costs, and I'm, I'm taking the mean, which is three to six inches. Mm -hmm. yeah, not enough, not a heavy one. So nope. 375, and I, you know, he said he went out you know, up 30 times. So 375 times 30 is 11,250. Now that doesn't include any special work. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but like 11,250, uh, Ashwaubenon Bay River Trail is 12,000 times 30 trips. Is 250. Times 30 trips. Oh, it is 250. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going three to six. Yeah. Okay. So that's another 7,500. Okay. So what are we at now? About 18 or 19? Somewhere around there? Okay. Well, let's just say. That's without salting. That's what. Oh, no, 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 that's with salting. No. Well, no. Salting's at 300. Salt is at 300 per application. But he said 30 trips. Because remember, he said right. about 18 snows and then with the salting and applications, you're at around 30. So I just. I just high, high, high figured it at 375 times 30. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I'm comfortable with it. Okay. So what was that? I'm sorry, I missed that. The, the river trail is 7,500. Okay. Again, so, with a three to six inch. Right. So he's, he's, only, he's only charging $275 for a three to six inch snow? Mm -hmm. For a trip down the trail. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. And one in. Okay. Yep. Plus 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 the hourly rate of, of anything that needs to be hauled away individually or done individually. So let's t and and I have no idea. Let's just say throw in another five thousand dollars. You know what I mean? For the rest of the trust. So so really you're at around twenty five thousand dollars. So I'm not telling anyone what to do, but you know, if you were to go to the village board and say, hey, we're, you know, based on some of these numbers and, you know, if we had 18 snows and, you know, 30, 30 plow times, you know, we should be somewhere around $25,000. If we did just these two trails, you know, do we want to try that and, and set that as your max number? If, if you just want to do those two trails, I, I don't know. Or do you, or unless you want to extrapolate those numbers and multiply them times five and go to the village board with that number. You want to go ahead. I, I did, I have a calculator here at my desk. I did the numbers differently than Rex did, but I came out with, between the river trail and Packerland, I came out with 25,500 and he came out with $25,000. I just did the numbers differently, but um, so that sounds like it's pretty good. You know, average twenty five thousand five hundred or twenty five thousand, I think, is a good number. You know, I would like to see all of them done, but I think it's maybe more important that we get some of them done as a test. You know, so we go to the board and we say. You know, we need fifty thousand dollars to do this, or forty thousand dollars to do this. They might just say, if, and I don't know what the budget, but I'm thinking the budget is going to be tight. They may just say, no, we won't even consider that. If we can say, you know, we understand the budget's going to be tight, we'd like to do them all, but you know, can we at least do these? If they see that we're willing to compromise, maybe they'll be willing to compromise. Maybe I'm wrong, but we we don't know. But you know, judging from just the sense I had for the people on the board, some of them would be willing to go along with plowing, and they would even be stronger advocates if it were, you know, a pretty reasonable number. You know, I don't base, I don't know how much the village budget is, but I'm thinking twenty-five thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars is a pretty small percentage of it. And please. <clears throat> Keep in mind that this this may not be in effect until roughly November of 22, because they can't do anything this year. And once January hits, now you've already got a snowpack trail. And 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 uh, and Jerry said that that wouldn't work because then they'd have to take bigger equipment and literally break through what's already frozen. Yeah. I've done um, that, so I know that. So we still have the ability to get this in this year's budget? Or are we yeah, took it along for next year? It's for 20, well, it would for be 2022, this and would then be like Rex said, it would be for one, 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 one session or one group, because you wouldn't have the January, February, March in 2022, so you'd only have November, December. So really, it would be less there anyways. Yeah. So yeah, you would need a commitment from the village board to that the 25,000 would be for the 22 slash 23 winter, winter right. which means they'd have to take part of this money for 22 and then agree to continue with some of that money for 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you'd have that consistency. So because you have a major territory where you have people living. Yep. And I'm thinking about pack the land, which would be great for me. Yep. But there's a lot of people that live off of Sand Acres. Sand Acres is an issue. Wabi Lane is Wabi an Lane. issue. Yeah, because you go Sand Acres. Sand Acres camping and those Main are Street. huge ones, those areas. But yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, if you do a trial basis, Let's, you know, to do it and see how it goes. And that maybe, or just letting people know that for Sand Acres, for Wabi, that you're not doing it this year, but we're doing these two to try it, see how it goes. And hopefully we'll continue on and get more money and it'll be well used. My only question was, did you want to, did you want to, rather than the pack of land, which you've got all these people living in Waterford Park, <laughs> but you got a lot of people over a year. Right. 
criteria as yeah. well. Yeah. He didn't know how he would do the industrial part of drill because we, yeah, I, we've got bollards on every entrance. So yeah, yeah, I wouldn't even attempt. Yeah, I think well, I'd that, leave that alone. They try to show you. No, yeah. they're not. Have we ever had an issue with that? I mean, that was the old standard. And we have from spend a lot of money to, to pull all those bollards out and have, have the trails be asphalted at every entrance. I'm just saying for consistency, I'm not that this is a discussion item today, but for consistency of their trips, we don't have bollards on really any other ones. There's some on that now that are left there, but yeah, the only other all the rest of them don't have them anymore. Right. So for consistency, I think that's a way to go and get rid of those the bollards. To the Metropolitan May River Trail off of Broadway has a movable bollard. Yeah. So, you know, and that's needed there because there's there's been many cases, several cases of so that not being put back in an up position and cars just driving down, thinking it's a real one. It sure is nice. I'd say cleared a lot of the brush off the sides of most of the trails. Oh my gosh. Rex, do you think through. that the cost for sand acres would be comparable to the cost for National May River Trail because of sort of the same conditions. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I haven't read it. I'll be honest, I haven't read it this year, so I, I I don't know what the the levelness of it is. So, but I I would think it would be fairly easy, only because it's a straight shot, and it seems like there's there are driveways. It seems like there's a, enough of a place to plow it off of. Yeah. Space it. I mean, the only thing about going to Sand Acres and following that one, oh, yeah. new trail, no, new trail. Wabi's been there forever. Packerland's been there. Why the heck do they get it now? And we're not doing them up on this neck of the woods. You know what I mean? New That's trail, like a brand new trail. Yeah. 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 No, I'm just saying. Yeah. It is what it is. It's newer, but yeah. Yeah, it is. I but, get it. Yeah. I, don't know. I was thinking more. Yeah. Because they're also building all those homes in that new area as well, but that doesn't mean we're trying to test to see if we can get them to finance anything in the budget. So I suppose maybe we can get them to move forward. I do know one thing though. They're gonna have, we're gonna have to go to them and tell them this is what it is. Not you know um not well. Well, we think we need twenty-five thousand dollars. You know, no, we don't say we think we need twenty-five thousand dollars. We need twenty-five thousand dollars because I know a couple of the board members are going to say it. Yeah. Yeah. What's what the is amount? The yeah. amount? Well, and that's they asked us to get more. Yeah, and, and that's uh, really like Rex's idea of saying, "Here's the most it's going to be. It could be less, but it's not going to be more than this." So we figure at twenty-five thousand dollars, and if you have money left over, nobody buys money. Well, and that's the case with snow removal. I mean, in some years, the highway department or when they're clearing the road, it's just tons of money left over because we have much snow. And then the next year, they we get slammed and the flood just blown out of the water. And that's the same thing with this. I mean, some years it'll be like, oh, we barely went out on the trail. Some other years will be like, oh man, we were out there for a lot. Yeah, we were way over. We hit our cap. I guess I'm looking at what's the best way to get something done. Just to get our foot in the door and get an agreement and. You know, Packer land is a difficult and expensive one. Maybe we just do the low hanging fruit like we talked about the other ones. And if we can get them to agree to something, you know, I think we've succeeded. Because this is a change in policy, you know, that the policy has always been we don't, we don't we don't plow the trail, so we're asking them to change policy. And if you know, if we get a concession of well, we're going to do these, then we have a precedent for plowing trails. Is there a sidewalk from the apartments that are back by the um, the hockey up to Ackerland? No. There's a path. Is it a path from the corner of Laden? So, yeah, well, the court Leighton up to West Main and Packerland is a path on the north side of the road. Yeah, yeah, but that path I think is only for the insurance company that's there, right? No, it's, uh, it's there's all one all on the north side. There's a new one on the north side that's put in, what, two, three years ago? Maybe yep, all the way down. Yeah, and then there's a sidewalk on 
that goes towards the sports complex on Layden. That would be on the west side of Layden. Yeah, you are. So yeah, you are. the sidewalk. All right, here's Packerland Trail. Yeah. There's a sidewalk that literally goes, literally goes it's up. down this whole side. Yeah. And then it, 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 yeah. it ends right in here at this driveway. Yeah. Well, and it's a path, right? It's a eight foot wide, it's, 10 foot it's wide a 10 path. Foot, it's a 10 foot wide there. path. So I'm just thinking of, I'm talking about population over by you in, in San Acres, think of population there. Yeah. 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 And the young Not lady. that I necessarily see, because I go through that parking lot sometimes and I feel like it's not like I see a ton of people coming out of there yeah. to do that. But yeah. Does it mean they wouldn't if it was? Yeah. That's clear. Okay, so looking at the quote we got from Apple Valley, looking at, you know, kind of the figures that Rex put together and the net put together, we're looking at $25,000 about for those two trails. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, going 30 times. Did we, did, did we figure some for, for um, if he had to come in with his trucks? We put an extra 5,000. That was 5,000. Yeah, okay. miscellaneous stuff. Um, so that equate that's like 4.2 miles, approximately 4.3 miles um, of trail that would be cleared because Packerland is a pretty good chunk of three miles. Um, if we do like you know a trial basis go to the village board and see if they'll as part of the budget include $25,000, mm -hmm. you know, and to try those two trails, clear those two trails starting in November of 2022, and then like. Rex said some of that money would be have to carry over to 2023 because we don't have the two months in, mm -hmm. in 2022. It's a way to get our foot in the door. See how it goes. We just set the limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And say do to, um, to not do not exceed contract, which I think is a good idea because then they know we know the village board knows worst case scenario is $25,000 or $30,000 or whatever. What was the original estimate? 25 to 30, but that was for everything. That's so we're, we're, yeah. This thing was really high to me when I think of the Fox River Trail and the numbers and the costs that they had. They weren't even close to this for, what do they have, six, seven miles of trail that they're clearing? With the highest amount well, was 18,000 in a year. And I know it's kind of a different trail. It's, it's a different trail. I think it's right. easier to plow. You're so, not you're not running the trucks all over. You're, yeah, you're, 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 you're running the plow or what that. truck, whatever. Yeah. You're there, he just goes down and turns around and goes back and drives away. Yeah. Or this maybe he doesn't even have to yeah. come back, you know, depending on what type of vehicle they have. They, yeah. they, 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 do, they do hoop passes on the box. Okay. Yeah. Down and back. Yeah. So. Well, I suppose wing, wing it two ways. Yeah. To keep the snow off to the side so they have room. <laughs> yeah, but we might be we might be high too. We're yeah, we're so we are going at 30, we're going at the three to six, we're figuring yeah. 5,000 for cleanup. And it might, maybe we'll be low. <laughs> Trends in the snowfall. Yeah. Or there could be more, more cleanup needed. We yeah, right. we don't yeah. Know. but this is a good test to find out yeah. what we're getting our dust levels into, because maybe the next year they say, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. Um, but it gives them an opportunity to maybe give us a chance. Yeah. Right. Um, and maybe one trail works well and the other one is just too difficult to do so you eliminate one and add one or two others right yeah you, know, you gotta, you gotta I try think it what the mix there you know based on, the, kinds, so. based on the new valuation of my home and the new mill rate uh -huh. this is peanuts compared to what the price <laughs> right. taxes went up yeah so well we don't know that for sure we don't well that's not the official mill rate that's just projected yeah, yeah. i don't know if it's but pretty the, close there yeah. This ain't their first rodeo, <laughs> but anyways, but I, I I agree. With you. I'm in total agreement. That's yeah. what we should do. Right. And this is what Rex got the numbers on. So let's let's go with what we got instead of start changing it around. Okay. Um, so. And then you'll hear from your constituents, and they'll be all of your be calling a, you up. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. GM, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you'll say, and you'll say, well, the village board meets on the last was it Monday of next month. Yeah. We'll be happy to hear you. We'll you know what cool. though. That's a good point yeah, because a good yes, yeah. that is a good point. Right. Yeah. You know, you are doing it. The village board did it. 
So, the, you know, if they claim that they come yelling and pounding on your door, you say, I agree with you. You come to and tell the village board that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, could, be, it could be a good thing, like you said. So yeah. you get some people to step up. I'm not much better than other citizens. You and I think it means, it means something to you. you I think we need up. to track down that guy from New Condos that spoke at the village board the night we were there because somebody came and was advocating for trails and biking. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We should invite him to join this committee. I think we have a new maybe. advisory committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jamie is right. The one that was there in the winter. Oh, yeah, perfect. So now you've oh. got somebody from yeah, She's not going to be a voting member, though. I don't know if you're on. Oh. She 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 live because she lives on in, in the apartments on Layton. Isn't that the village? That's Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. But, but Mary still wanted her opinion on things, so yeah. she, she put her on as the new party. Oh, nice. good. So we still need a, a regular member. Okay. Well, so bringing that up, Hobart. So we're going to pay to clear the Hobart part. There will be a discussion at the village board level. Yep. And, now and, that has been, and there will be some people that won't have an issue with that, and then the others that do. So, I think that a lot of them will have an issue with it. And it's about, I suppose, about a mile of packer land is So, so if we don't plow that, it's yes, a sense then, of plowing the rest of it. I know. Yeah. How much yeah. is the night of it? None. None? None. Well, the night of property is adjacent to the trail, but I don't think it's their like property. It's all a short run. I understand. I think Mary was concerned about. I thought, I thought the, the piece of property immediately south of the gas station was still one item. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And then, and then once you hit uh, Jim Hawk's appraisal yeah, building, think, yeah. then that comes back to the Schwab line again. Yeah. But I think I think that piece was uh, right next to the gas station is Oneida because that's where they were looking at putting in. That incinerator a couple of years back. That's oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's okay. Cool. Sunflower, though. Any other discussion? Otherwise, um, if someone would want to make a motion to the extent of you know looking at the two trails, uh, not to exceed number of 25,000, estimated 25,000 um, or 30, whatever you feel. Um, um, you know, try it on trial basis and see if it goes through. And I don't know, Rex, if this would need to go back to village board at the next meeting or if this will just be part of the budget process and then you will put it into your budget. I'll talk with Joel. I okay. don't know what he wants to do. So do, we, I, do I dare ask? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. No, yes. If they say absolutely not, we're not doing the back of that trail. So, so much of it is not as well, no one else mm -hmm. has to do it. I still think we should try to. I, I was going oh, to bring that up. Then. Oh, what, what, what's, what, what's our option number three? What's next in line for what trail you want done? I'm not familiar with all of them, but I bike on sand acres, not on a trail. I'm not bothered on trails because yeah. I'm just going down the road. But I see a lot of people using that trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that would be an easy one to plow. I think we could get good results on that. So that would be the one I would. Recommend if if we can't get pack of land, San Diego's. I don't know what. How, how about I'm gonna throw this up there? How how about San Acres and then the new section that goes to Ridge? Because that way you have a, a big L, and then they can jump on Ridge and kind of loop right back down oh, Ridge yeah. to San Acres. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's like if I'm living there. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I can, you know, I'd be, I, I would do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, so we, because you're in a trail half of your route, and then the other half you're probably walking on bridge. Yeah, you know, we talked about connectivity, so I think that makes a lot of sense. Oh, Tracy, what do you think? I'm just talking. I, I, you mean San Diego is a good choice, but there's a lot of people use Wabi. Wabi is a big use because there's a lot of businesses out there, and I think people. Have, Work with those businesses. I mean, I have people from the apartment complex that walk through my neighborhood, go down the trail to go to work at Schneider. Um, so, Wabi gets used very heavily too. So, and that was like the first group that had contacted me was the Wabi Link group that wanted that clear. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I guess I'm more familiar with Sand Acres. Yeah, and Sand Acres is, I'm not saying Sand Acres is very cool as well. They would love to have that 
that cleared, and then you have that new trail that's going in and the subdivision that's going on the west side. So a bit of the people at four foot of the trail on that one as well. So we have that connectivity there, but I don't know. I have mixed feelings because what Sandy Acres is so new and Wabi Lane has been there a long time. Do you think they'd have an issue with Pacland because of Hobart or because of both the Oneida as well? It doesn't matter. There's parts of the trail that's not. It's not. So yeah. it's not the first step. No one, they're not willing to plow it. <laughs> but I mean, Oneida probably wouldn't plow it either. So, but Hobart has already said they will not plow it. Yep. So, okay. Because my thought was maybe we could do. Um, Street. But if that's the case, you can invest in items where you would take back the land further up past the lobby. Well, then you got connection from Waterford, plus you got connection all the way back to you. To if you went down Main, that's more miles. Well, maybe not because you're not going all the way back to 172. Well, I mean, we could do this. Say and not just exceed numbers, try them on trial basis. We're trying to get at least two trails. If we start working on pack of land, because they're gonna have to work on pack of land, get more of a cost. You know, Hobart right now is saying we're not gonna plow it. Oneida's may Oneida maybe has not been approached on the plowing, I have no idea. But when you figure out the cost, you know, getting back to Hobart and saying, you know, those boards put money in, are you willing to put in thousand dollars to clear mm -hmm. your portion of the trail? Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe they say no, and then it's like, well, then it doesn't pay for us to do it, so then we're going to go to either Wabi or Sand Acres and do it that way. Well, from the standpoint of Hobart, I don't know that they're going to commit to the village direct providence commits. That's my thought, too. If the sure. village commits, and then we go to them and say, well, this is the actual cost it would be for your section. But, 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 but it's, I think Hobart's already said they won't. But it is, yeah. it is, I know they did, but I'm just saying, if you got, you know, once you get the numbers, maybe it's such a small token amount that they might go, okay, just for the goodwill and for our residents that are living there. But maybe not, maybe they'll just say, no, oh, not doing it for everybody. So no, go I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to make this any more complicated than we have to because you go to the village board and say, well, we'll have to contact Hobart. Mm -hmm. No, let's not even go there. Let's say the village board. Here's what we'd like you to do. Would you, are you willing to do it or not? And if later on we can get some money on the Hobart grade, but I don't, you know, I don't want the village board to have wiggle room on this. I think it's up or down. We're doing pack of land or they're not. And if they said no, we're not doing pack of land. They'll say, well, why don't we do Wabi and that's one way river trail then. That would be a good test. You know, we're still staying under $25,000. You know, we eliminate that other question and kick that can down the road. But I guess, you know, as much as I'd like to do that, I don't want to make this any more complicated than, I want it, I want it easy, I want it to be easy for the village board to say yes. Yeah, you're right. Otherwise it's not going to go through. So. So then take back our land out and substitute one right off the bat. Or you have your contingency plan. Everyone's looking at me. It's kind of like it's your decision on how you want to present it. I think for simplicity, simplicity's sake, we say we would like to have a non to exceed contract for $25,000 looking at doing a Schwabame Trail and Packerland. And then we work through it. I, and, I agree with you. and then if it's yeah. if we find Packerland, it's just like there's no way. Then we go back and say, okay, we really worked on Packerland. It just is not going to work. It's going to be too difficult because of this, 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 and this. We would like to do Wabi, change the Wabi. We, we will have till November of 2022 to, to ferret this all out. He'll have time to do the bids, get the, you know, get bids out there and see where we're at. So it's not like we're gonna be really pushed for it. You know, it's a matter of getting it in the budget and saying, okay, 
philosophically does a village board support trying to clear some trails? Mm -hmm. That's the question to the tune of 25,000 hours in the budget. The more you confuse them, the, the harder it's going to be right. to get it done. Right. And keep it that and that way, and then we can acknowledge to them, yes, if if there's issues with one of those trails or either both of those trails and it's too difficult, we'll it, look it, at another it, one. It, we can always go, well have that other one in your back pocket. Right. Though. So yes. yeah, you don't, don't have to come back it. to another right. meeting. Right. You exactly. Don't prolong it. So right. if they say no, absolutely we're not doing Packerland, well then we'd like to do two trails. Yes. Packerland is off the table. Then we propose we just in this one. And yes, if it's Wabi, it's Wabi. If yeah. it's Sand Acres, it's Sand Acres. Have that ready and, to go. And I would list the river trail as our number one. Because if we say we want the river trail and we want, you know, because I think it's easier to drop your number two and move up your number three than is to throw out your number one. So we like that Wabi River Trail and we like Packerland. Let's say no, we're not Packerland. Well, then how about Sand Acres? How about Wabi? You know, with the amount of miles that we're talking about, Packerland is the, the chunk, biggest chunk. That's over three miles. I bet you Wabi and Sand Acres together probably would equate to Packerland. So you could potentially say Packerland, no, we're not doing Packerland. So we're looking at comparable mileage. We're going to say Ashwami River Trail still and Wabi and Sand Acres. And we're probably talking about very close to maybe even a little less than the three miles. That I don't have that document with me that listed all the miles. I think if it's comparable, that's a good idea to just do both of them together. Yeah. Then. yeah. Do you want to move on? I can measure. Okay. If I'm wrong okay. So, does anyone want to do a motion? Otherwise, I will make a motion that we do a Charlemagne River Trail on Packerland. But the contract not to exceed twenty five thousand dollars starting in twenty twenty two. I agree. Is that a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Okay. Annette, you got oops. Aye. <laughs> okay. Uh opposed. All right. Motion carried. Thank you guys. And then Rex will figure out if we need to go to the board. Or if it'll be part of the budget process, and then he'll put the twenty-five thousand dollars in his budget, and then we'll go through the process, um, like a project in the budget, and then we'll keep you posted on that. And when it's going through, and maybe have people try to come, or have some people come to those meetings, if it ends up going through that way. Right, yeah, we yeah, we need to be at the meeting where this is discussed. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you guys. I know that's a, a tough one. <laughs> Or a complicated one, I should say, not tough. So to clarify on the lobby trail, where yep. are we starting on the lobby trail uh, to the east? Let's say we start at Ridge to Packerland. Okay. That's the whole piece, basically. I just didn't know if you were going down towards towards 41 or not. Okay. No, that's a sidewalk. There's no more trail. There's only a sidewalk to Ridge. Yeah, that's a sidewalk. Okay. There's a sidewalk on the other side of the street, which is cleared anyway. So that would be a good connection because then you could go all the way down from Packerland on Wabi Lake Trail. So Wabi is 1.08. Okay. And what are we looking at? We're looking at Sandy Houston. That's going to be one mile. One mile. So it's less than Packerland. What was going on? Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. What would you put in the trees? Packerland is 3.1. Is this 2.08? Yeah. So it's less mileage and less so, complicated. So you may, have, you know. I'd, I'd still like to know if we're going to try and work with the Oneidas, or are you saying that we don't think the, the Oneidas that own that lot, they must own the land in front of the, the uh, casino gas station, right? Or they wouldn't be there. I don't know. We, we, we've got an easement, but it's their property. We've got an easement. So you, got, trail. you have that too. Then. Okay. Is that, I would like to see someday where even if you could get Packerland from Skylark all the way south 
Oh yeah. To connect the main. Yep. And if we well, can't that includes that, the three point one would include that mm -hmm. whole piece. But he's saying like, I'm saying if we eliminated the park going yeah, right the north, north yep. and couldn't. Yeah. Because you're also eliminating so, probably a bunch of this bunch extra of work. Yes, mm -hmm. because that's and not that you want to have some yep. of that coming down Main Street because there are a couple driveways here, but yep. it's not like this yep. going north. Yeah, but you're right. But I think if we're dealing, we're considering what to do with the village board really objects to falling back to land. We just take back no, the, off the yep, table. Don't disagree that. Yeah, I'm saying I don't want to stop understanding whether we can work with the Unitas to do oh, that yeah. in the future. Right, right. And if we get this through, then then is the time to approach it. Right. After the if 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 and when the board approves plowing, then we can go to them and say, hey, if this project works out and we've already you officially out, because I can ask Mary, because Mary was with touch base with the Oneidas regarding plowing of their property. So then we would need to ask Mary not only to do that, you know, are are they okay having it plowed? Right. That was the yeah. first question. Yeah. Because they might not want it plowed for yeah. different reasons. Yep. But then, are you willing to plow it yourself? Yeah. On top of it, so you want Mary to ask both of those questions. I mean, if she has that type of relationship, I think we need to. I would think we would with the right. It Seems like we do okay. as a village. Um, yeah. Everyone agree that I, I can pose that, Mary? Because yeah. <laughs> you got to remember, right now in the winter, I run down Pioneer, and you drive down, so I got to get out of the way. <laughs> Because he only has one headlight. He isn't going to see us. Right? You're like the third person that's told me that in the last few days. Yes, I got to get it in. Uh, He's afraid I'm going to run over him with my bicycle. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't see you in September. Yeah, right. I have most of the time. Jack, yeah, man is recognized. <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. We got a motion. We'll to keep us in the loop whether it'll go to village board at the next meeting or whether it will go part of the budget process. So we'll keep you guys in the loop and I appreciate all your hard work on this and Rex getting the numbers and stuff together for us. So that's something yeah. to move forward with. Um, next agenda item review updates on the 2018 plan project list. Anything to add to that? Rex had some highlighted area towards on the third page on things that you know we recently yeah you've filled a bunch of them That's yeah nice. um Appreciate so that. anything to add or anything that yeah that was just like a going over it to go over it closely because i just kind of went over it with sue and we went back and forth on, on what's been done and what's not done. yeah the only thing i would say is if we go through them seeing it's printed here if you go to and again i didn't read these i should have before came but like number 16 is blank so i haven't read it yet what it even is like ashland like i didn't have an answer yeah ashland avenue intersection improvements two and three so that's just the area of the region improved pedestrian crossing safety at intersections with pots hansen pilgrim and Cormier. um you probably don't know that's good that would be some of the statement to you, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. We, I forget what we put terminology we use for things like that. Um, some of them say we even plan to review for possible future consideration, but it, it's more to your point. What do we have anything in here that says DOT dependent? There's a bunch of those. That would be Rex, right? Yeah. It's what number are you pots, it's number 16. We've got Pots, Hanson, Pilgrim, and Cormier. We're not going to do anything with that without the DOT, right? I just looked at those ones on the last, last page. Oh. The one that those, those, they have put, they push, but they have push buttons on Hanson now. They have push button on Pots. Okay. Pilgrim, I'm not sure, and Cormier, I don't, oh, yeah, Cormier, I think they added one too, didn't they? Cormier? So they do have a, a push button there, but it's it needs still more. Because um, I know Hanson, Rex, you worked on that one, and they have the push button on the south side of Hanson and Ashland now. So that someone standing in as biker or a walker can push that button, and then they can actually get the signal to work. Because those and signals push, don't and work. You can push that without getting off your bike. You just lean a little. 
Yeah, it's kind of a stretch though, man. My arms. <laughs> yeah, I'd like it too, but I don't know. I almost <laughs> fell over one day doing that. Um, and Pods has the button as well. But if you're a pedestrian, it's on the wrong side of the road. And there's not one for the pedestrian crossing on the other side because pedestrians are going against traffic. So it's not ideal, but they have done something to help people get across. So does anyone know about some improvements, but more needed? <laughs> But we're just trying to keep these, we don't want to just delete it if there's more that's needed. Um, because we need to review these so often. Well, but, say, but, well let's... Yeah, but this is for pedestrians, it's improved pedestrian cross and safety. Well, if those if those push buttons are not on the side that the pedestrian is, it still, needs to, be still yeah, needs to be done. As I said, we we'll put some improvement, but... But there hasn't been any improvement for pedestrians. Yeah. It's, it's been improved for biking. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I would leave it. Okay. Um, DOD dependent. Okay. So if I'm reading correctly, the next blank is number 38. 24. Oh, 24? See, I'm not reading correctly. That was too little. I can't see that. What is that? That's pedestrian as well. Sidewalk. East side from Hanson to Lobby. Um, that's, not on, that's not on any plan right now. Other than this one. Okay. Whatever happened to uh, um, Hanson Road? On the um, from that's on the tip plan. Yeah, if you're talking about biking to yeah, whatever happened to that? It's on the tip plan. It is. I think that I see it's out here. 2021. Okay, so let's finish this one first. Let's do. We want to. I'm leaving something before that, which says leaving plan for review for possible future consideration, and put the day's date in there. Yeah. Because I think the thing we need to do that we haven't done a whole lot of is go back to these and look at them once in a while and just review them. Yeah. Because some of them may have been done. Uh, Rex has been doing that for us, but. Uh, um. What's today? Nine. Half the month is gone. Jeez, we have half the month. Enough. Okay. 38 then? Mm -hmm. That's not on any plan except for this. Okay, so same thing then. Leave and plan. Nine, 13, 21. Um, 43. Pioneer Drive. That's bike. Mm -hmm. White outside means. I think that one we were talking was going to be hard. Is that the one that we we're saying, like, because of the parking, like, how would you do that with all of them? Well, Pioneer Drive. Is that all the way down to? Down to Skyline. I mean, so you're you're talking about getting rid of the VNLs and then putting in wide outside lane. Mm -hmm. that, that's I don't know. It's... VNLs are. Service wide outside lanes are just not a uh, okay. approved, yeah. I would right. say, uh, yeah. application. They're just something that the village came up with, one of the trustees came up with many years ago. So, by all rights, there is a wide outside lane on those roads. They just have to be striped as VNLs. So, but, they, the but they're not they, wide enough to be considered a bicycle lane or... No, and so they have to be parking. They're not going to make them a bicycle. They will never happen as a bicycle lane. And you really don't need them there. It's a residential, residential road. You know, usually bike lanes are more on collectors and arterials. Yeah. Yeah. And they are like a typical residential type road. You probably don't need it there. I mean, like, you know, Circle might be a good one to have bike lane. Ridge would be a good one maybe to have bike lanes on because they're more of a collector and there's more traffic on there. Um, 
most people don't even know what those white lines are for. I know, and that's kind of the problem. We don't know what those are, what they mean, and then when you get bike lanes. So should we just get rid of 43 for now? That's where you know it's kind of where it's at, or are you saying? Yeah, you know, we could take that out because you know, they're not going to do anything. What would have been, would have been nice is there's a lot of kids that walk that street to school. Would have been there with sidewalks in the right. street, yeah. but that's yeah. probably never going to happen either. Yeah. So, yeah, we can probably eliminate that because I will say people, because that's from my route, people do pay, <laughs> they do pay attention to the white line. Oh, sure. They do. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they do. It keeps people up at least in the middle of the road yep. versus. But to this day, I still see multiple people walking with them. Can't believe that just mentally they, they feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> the guy was hit me the other day and he was just not. Yeah. He was looking on the other side of the road and I'm like. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, you got to look over. Oh, 44. All right. So far, no. Mm -hmm. I think that should just be left in the plan. Just mm -hmm. see where it goes in the future. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Twenty twenty one two. Um, I mean, that one should should be put in. I mean, it's it's a great connection. Um, mm -hmm. Should be done. Okay. I guess we just have to leave that in because wasn't that done? Was there work on that done on that road, or am I thinking something else? No, you're right. That road was re redone, but there was no sidewalk place. So. Yep. So definitely a sidewalk should go in there, especially because there's none on there's none on Hanson from Oneida Ashland. There's there's a sidewalk on Oneida. There's a sidewalk on Holmgren, and then there's a sidewalk goes on Vanderpeeren. Out to Ashland, but that piece between Oneida Street and Holmgren, when they reconstructed the road, they did not put a sidewalk there, so there should be a sidewalk there. So. I mean, it's just a, a great connection because there's already pieces of sidewalk all over, it's just a matter of connecting it. So, and maybe that's something to put in there, it's you know, a great connection sidewalk. Or, or something because it takes you on access to four different pieces of sidewalk. That's my part for a pass. I think those so are, there's so three Brett, Bart Starway, Pilgrim Way, Columbia Road. I think those Brett are Park on. Pass is coming up pretty quick. Yeah, that's pretty quick. That was part that's of the side of the stadium. So, yeah. so you think this may be. In fact, there's more development happening there. So yeah. Someone yeah. just yeah. buy the Jersey store. Okay. Mm -hmm. like yeah. I think that's what we were leaving some of that stuff because we knew yeah. there was going to be yeah. changes in that area. So we were anticipating them to be done one day. So leave it on your plan and then we'll yeah. review it. Yeah, definitely. So I, it, it's, it's live, yep. it's up. It, I think it will be done, at yep. least the first couple ones, but it's kind of up in the air because it's still, there's development happening right sure. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, Pedro Moy is back here again, what's this one? Oh. It sounds like yeah. when I talked to Doug yeah. for Brett Bar Pass and Park Starway, the city of Green Bay is putting in sidewalk. Uh, The one that has that has um Agitate Brewery on it. It's like Canadair. Can, Tony Kennedy will drive it. Put either mm -hmm. sidewalk in there all the way down to Bart Star. And I think they've asked us to connect. Yeah, and we're gonna do the connection to 
along Brett Favre, on the north side of Brett Favre, 209 Street, or excuse me, <laughs> yeah. and then Green Bay is putting in on Bart Starr down to Mike McCarthy, is that the second one? The one mm -hmm. that, Probably yes, Bart Mike, Starr, uh, yes, Bart Starr. they're going down as far, I think there's one block by that ingredient carpet place. Yeah, and then we're going to put in that piece next year. So that's in the budget for next year that Doug told me. So that piece is going in the village. The village is putting the piece in by by fire, and the city of Green Bay is putting all those other sidewalks in, which will be great. So that should be done next year, is what they told me. When you said that, I have to get out my list here. Okay, so we got all those taken care of, them, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else on that, if anybody? Otherwise, we. Those on the end. So in, in uh, 11, 12, and 13, we're going to will be completed in the future. Well, the number 13 is the south, the sidewalk on the south side of Corbin Road, and that's yeah, the village. Oh, that's in the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 11, 10, and 11 for sure are in 2022, according to Doug. Pilgrim Way, I don't know about that one, and then Cormier, I think, is is up there, but but I think both of us should just be left to the plan. All right. Okay. Right. So then I would say at some point we need to review these and prioritize them to bring them. Yeah. So yeah. we have a list of priority. Yeah. One through whatever. Not idea. that that won't change, yeah. but I think then we review it. Yeah. I'm yeah. not saying every month, but if we did yeah. it every quarter, we'd be yeah. better than not doing it at all. Yeah. That's good. All right. So I know the next one. Um, Kyle had asked us to be put on the um, agenda discussion of possible action on bicycle parking for the sports and entertainment district. And um, connected to that, hopefully you have a chance to look at the village does have an urban design guideline, which is very well done. I look, looked at that. Um, and that really is strictly for the entertainment center, entertainment area, sports center, entertainment area, and the village center area that covers those two development areas and does require um, bike parking. But what it does not, this is one of the specifics that have. Yeah, it says it needs say. bike parking. Yeah. And I think I would like to sort of codify that a little bit. Yeah. And just, just so there's, there are guidelines of the, I always. APBT, Association that, of Pedestrian Bike. Pedestrian. That shows what, what, you know, what they're recommended bike parking. Thanks, Jeremy. So it would be, you know, concreted in and it was the correct way to attach your bike. So it's, you know, it's not, so it's, it's more secure. Yes. And, and, and it just, you know, if you say bike parking, what does bike parking mean? Somebody just paint a, a red box on the, say, here's your bike parking. So we just want something a little, yeah. a little more defined. Yeah, so on, the, on that document, basically the one place where they talk about bike parking is on page 25 of that doc document, and it really just says you have to have bike parking. It doesn't go into specifics, like I said. Um, so I think having something in there that you should um, look at or require them to meet the standards of the APBP, um, because then they'll place it correctly, they'll get the right type of rat, um, put that in there. And then my other question would be does that need to be in? In our ordinances, Rex, do you have any idea? I mean, if it's in there, does it have to be in the ordinances? And then that obviously only applies to two areas. Can you send it? It's on the building. Because the link is here. Okay. Oh, the link is here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I can send it if you have. No, no, if there's a link, that's fine. Incorporate by. Parking area was in by Rex and the site development. So okay. uh, you're asking me uh, about codifying it. I, I would say, if Aaron, if, if, I would say, if, if you ask Aaron, who meets with the developers, Aaron is real big to have teeth in something so he can back it up. Okay. It's just a suggestion. He right. can't he tell can. people to do it. Okay. So this document is a guideline that they give out and it kind of spells out. So when the developer's coming in, he looks at it and goes, okay, these are the 10 things or 100 things that they look at that they require for my development. But then the ordinances would really be specific and be more forceful. So 
I mean, I would think that we'd want to put that it would have to follow or required to follow APDP guidelines or standards for the placement of bike parking. And I think not even just for the entertainment district and the village center that it should be for any new development coming in, they should have to because I just saw a business put them in and I think maybe the village required them to. And they put it so tight against the wall of the building that you literally can't use the bike rack except if you put your bike this way and the bike is the rack is designed to put your bike in this way. So you that pick and save, is it? Um no, it was um Center for Childhood Safety. They have so tight up against their building that you literally can't your bike in it. And they do that all the time. People do that all the time. They make the slab and then they put it right at the far end of the slab and you can't get into it. So I think having that in the ordinances for all development that comes in that they have to follow those guidelines because then we'll get bike racks that are actually usable right. and mm -hmm. done properly. And it should be in our bike and fed plan too. It's yeah, it probably should. So so what I would suggest doing to make this more official for Aaron is to do a vote on, 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 on requesting him to come up with the proposed codification of that request. Yeah. And that way update it in this one too. And update in that and then and to codify it. So I would I would I don't want to step on your toes, Trace, but yeah. I would no. I would say to officially have a vote for that. So yeah. you could say the committee yeah. voted to move this forward to, as an official request. Yep, I would agree. Does anybody want to make that? I will move that we ask Aaron to develop a, a code for requiring bike parking, to codify the code for bike parking. And that they, that they the follow, that yeah, the standards, and that they put it in this one too. And we put in the urban guide sign urban guidelines. Guide. Susie Gallat. Almost. <laughs> Was it for all new development? All development. All development. All development. Commercial? Commercial, yeah. Com commercial. Yeah. commercial. Yeah. Okay. And um, the urban design guideline. Yes. A second from anybody? Do we, sorry, do we want to discern between Retail entertainment versus, you know, industrial. I think the APDP guidelines do take that into account. Right, I don't know. Just it looks like employees that and that type of thing, rather than that people are really going to come there, you know, or visitors. So I think it does take that into account. Okay. And if Aaron has a problem with that, he can come back to us. Yeah. Okay, so a motion that did you second? <laughs> okay, second motion, second. So all those in favor say aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Looks like Annette left the meeting. I don't know if she had the forward oh, lost connection. All right. Um the next thing on the agenda is action on possible application for bicycle friendly status. Um I just mentioned this to Joel. Again, it's, it's kind of a good process to go through. It it educates everybody. It tells what we're really doing well at, what we're really maybe behind on when you do the fill out the application. Um, so it's a good learning thing for everybody. And they might say, okay, this is what we really need to work on. This is what we're doing well. Um, the League of American Bicyclists is the one that does. Um, does this program and they are as you can see from the email they are revamping their program so they will not have their new standards available until the fall of 2022 um, and the application will be changed um, i think in may of 2022 it would be available the application will be available but then it would be due by fall of 2022 so it's just something i guess to think about we don't necessarily have to make a motion tonight but just if it's something we would a process we'd like to go through a, there's several communities in the area that have done this. Um, I've worked with some other communities that have done it. Um, and again, it is, it's kind of a good learning thing to tell us, you know, where we're at on our, our bicycle accommodations and what, where we need to mark and where we're doing really well. Um, so that's really all that was. It was just kind of a, a way to help us as we move forward. Um, you know, they're really focusing a lot on um, the changes that they're making, you know, we keep hearing, you know, the equity 
things. So that's one of the things they're looking at is you know having equity be a big part of it. Um, looking at on and off street bicycle infrastructure and make sure it's it's um, listing current national guidelines and standards. You know you're getting a lot more um, different types of combinations and then really looking at the five B's um, mm -hmm. and the big changes I think that they're making in it. Um, so it's just a something to throw out there for something we want to consider in the future or if we want to wait or any thoughts on it or comments on that. Well, I, I think it's I think it's a good thing. I think it's kind of late in this year if they're going to be changing their oh, yeah we can't do this yeah. I think their their deadline is already passed this yeah. year. So yeah I think it's something we need to look at in May when the, the next cycle of applications and the application comes back and we can look at a little bit more. Okay. So how do we try to look at it? We have to hold them afterwards. Right. No, no. Okay. We'll just um, maybe. Sure, Tracy's going to put it on the radar. Yeah, we'll put it on the radar, radar. then. We'll, when it's done, we'll bring it back in May and then see what we think and look at the application and see if it's something we want to do or not. Okay. And, in the meantime, oh, okay. we can get more education. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. That was all that one that was. All right. Department reports. Rex, anything to add? But you didn't bring Jeff's still hanging in there. <laughs> uh, construction on uh, the new section of West Main Avenue Trail started today. I know they started to line up some cones and barrels last week, but construction actually started today on it. So, yeah, why not? Yes. That's it. Yeah, they, they're done with uh, in water testing for the, for the bridge trail. Yeah. Um, waiting for the results on that. We've got a meeting, I think, sometime next week. Uh, potential even easements and, and whatnot, and again, all this stuff needs to be flushed out before the project officially goes to village board. We still need to have a community meeting on everything. But we are proceeding with everything that we need to do to, to, to get that to happen. So, uh, sure, of course, Trail. Um, we, we're adding an extra section on the north side of the channel and around the pond. So everything in the woods is done, basically, except now we're waiting for custom manufacturing to come in and put the boardwalk in. Um, that should be done. They're supposed to do it in late September, so I'm, I'm waiting for a phone call on that uh, with an actual date. Once the boardwalk is in, we'll do our final piece, which is right around the, uh, between the pond and Shady to connect the official loop. But, uh, yeah, we finished that up about a week and a half ago with all the pressure dust. It's all pressure. You could probably walk your dogs back in there. But right. signs that keep out, so I'm not going it's in there. Because I don't out. want anybody to say, that bike and head guy was in there. <laughs> it's, if, if, it's, if it's been rainy, I can tell you the wetland areas are going to be muddy. But it, it, if we have a couple dry days in a row, it, it, it's definitely still walkable. Because from every time I ride by, it's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. We actually have ordered some different uh, wildflower seed that we're going to try and fill in on the sides to nice. give it a little bit of color. Oh, that'd be great. And we'll see what happens. What kind of bridge are you thinking about putting down that front? Or where you have testing them? An expensive one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it'll wind up being probably 15 feet wide. You know, I'll have to drop a pickup truck. It's a pedestrian only bridge. Yeah. That's curious because I was in Wallacosa again and they had like three or four of them to the park and they're big, these old big wood planks. And the old steel, it's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's the old style. Yeah. I don't know what kind of maintenance there is on something like that. Well, we want it all. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the park was built this weekend. Vans for two days straight. Nice. It's, 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 it's just different. It's just different. It's placed on it. Yeah. Anyways. All right. Um, Jeff Panzier, thank you for hanging in there. Do you have anything for us for public safety? Um, not a whole lot. Uh, I was trying to get a, re a print off of the report for our accidents in the area. Um, and Diane left before that was going to happen today. But um, there was one this weekend. Um, it was again on Holmgren Way near the bar. Alcohol had to do with it again. Um, it sounded like a pickup truck hit, was headed southbound with a trailer behind them. Uh, the pickup truck went by. They thought that uh, they didn't realize there was a trailer behind them and got hit by the trailer. 
kind of walked right out in front of the trailer, part of the, 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 them as they went by. Um, I don't know how significant the injuries are, but from witnesses, it sounded like there was a pretty good thud. So, um, so it's just an ongoing issue down there. I know that we're planning on getting lights and stuff of that nature. I, I just don't know maybe during pack games that we start fencing things off. But again, I, you know, once alcohol gets involved, it, I don't know how you fix it. So. Yeah. I, that's what I heard. Jeff, I have one for you. This is Dale. Um, so I have somebody that asked me and we, I don't remember where it is. What is the electric scooter ordinance for a Schwabenon? And then what, where would I find it for the state if we don't have our own? Well, I know that we have been, that has been being discussed and that's relatively very new um, for the village. So I guess it's something that we should look into. Um, I don't know if there's officially one for that. I believe there is. And I can get back to you guys on that. Yeah, he's, he's looking for guidelines for himself um, to sway follows what the fish water rules are. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. All right. Anything else, Jeff? Uh, nope, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, schools, nothing. Um, well, oh, Natalie is not here. She was not here. Okay. She came in late virtually, or okay. late, and she did put a message up there uh, that she will, in a few weeks, provide a report on the proper events. Okay. Within a few weeks, she said. Sounds good. Well, one thing at the last Active Communities Alliance, they talked about scooters, and they are able to geofence them. So I think. They could keep them on the bird. Bird could keep them out of that trauma. Yep, and they did. They, they, and, they did. And, they, and they can also restrict speeds on them. Yep. Wait a minute. Let me follow if you, well, well, your friend, scooters. if your they're friend, who owns his own person. No, so but if, if one of the one of the rental scooters, yeah. once they once they hit the city limits of Green Bay, oh. they shut off. Yeah. Oh. For the rental ones. Yeah. No, yeah. this is a person. Yeah. And that's an electric bike we were talking about. No, it's no, a scooter. 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 I can say they're all over now, like with the high school kids, like use them for transportation. I think they'll school back and forth, honestly. They lay all over now. All I can think of the and... middle school boys that play football must use them to get back and forth to practice. And I was like, actually, thanks, total sense to me. <laughs> yeah. I'd be happy to be their parent and not have to drive them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I just had a few updates from Doug that he passed on that I want to just let you know on real quick. Title Town Crosswalk, I mean, we, talk, we talked about that on Ridge Road between the Title Town District and the stadium where they have the blinking lights. Yep. Sure. Um, cross, or excuse me, stop bars were installed on um, August 31st, so they did put stop bars in, in that area. And we had talked about that at Bike Ped, I don't know, several months ago. Um, Wabi Lane, Ramada Way Crosswalk, um, that's on the far. Oh yeah, this is on Oneida Street um, by Starbucks and then by Denny's, yep. those two crosswalks. Yep. Um, the county did put in crosswalk signage in that area. So mm -hmm. I know it's to last night. Um, so they did put those in on the 26th of August. Um, railroad crossing, if any of you are bicyclists and know the how, what poor condition the <laughs> railroad crossings are on uh, specifically Ramada Way, Parkview by Allied, um, by Allied contract and at Schwabenon Street. All those are being repaired. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can what about the Ridge Road then? On Gorey, Goring Ridge, you know. Yeah, just that one. That one oh my is not in the, in the way right now. There's not in this list right now. They're doing a bunch of um, milling and paving in that area. It's like on, on contract at Schwabenon and Ramada Way are all getting repaved. Um, and Parkview is terrible. That's the one that's skewed. Oh, that is terrible. Um, so Doug talked them into doing that one. Well, they're there too in the other ones. So they're going to take care of that one. I also asked Doug if he could put some signage up by Parkview because of the skewed um, crossing there to let people know that it's skewed because on a bike, you have to literally go out and, and do it. So he's going to put those signs up as well. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those where the, the crossing is, you know, where you have to kind of line up. 
they have signage oh, that yeah. warns people ahead, that warns bicyclists that you have to line up better with this so you hit it um, perpendicular rather than drop your wheel in it. So those will be done. So that is huge. And I'm, I'm the Park View one forever because I've I fallen on it. I've fallen many friends, it. I thought you did. I have many friends that have fallen on that one. So that one's tough. So that will be done hopefully shortly. But I know it's there. Um, Packerland Drive, there was a request from neighbors that live on the northern end, um, up by Pioneer School area. They were concerned about the inability to get across Packerland to get over to the trail. And Doug worked with them, talked to them, um, and he is going to be putting into the CIP a crossing with um, a hawk crossing, and that is very similar if any of you have been on um, Ridge now. That's Riverside in Alloway. They oh, put that hawk yeah. crossing in. That's by Dairy Queen there where a uh, pedestrian pushes the button. It actually literally stops all the traffic, so it turns to red so the traffic cannot go. Um, they're talking about putting one up on the northern end of Packerland, so south of 172, <coughs> but north in that section kind of where the businesses are, um, either at West Paulson or maybe Carolyn. And it's of course it's a Brown County road, so there'll be some discussion. But he is looking at putting money into it, and he has put money into the CIP for that. For I don't know what year he had it on, but that's at least in the thought pattern. And now that I say that, maybe that should have been put on our list, but maybe we'll see. Um, and then Highland Ridge Development—that's one that we looked at. Um, they are going to start the Ped Crossing should be started in mid to late October. Um, they are going, a, new, a no parking ordinance is being put in place for that area on Sand Acres, like Kyle, Kyle had suggested, so they will no longer be parking anywhere in front of the um, golf course area. So mm -hmm. there'll be a little bit of parking north, because there's some residential up there, mm -hmm. and then there's parking on the south end closer to Grant that will be allowed. But there's quite a big distance there that they no longer will allow parking in, and that's going to Village Board on the 28th of this month to okay. approve that. So parking will be taken out, so we won't be blocking that crossing. Home. So Doug has a lot of stuff that he has done. He was talking between what, Caroline and Paulson? Um, either, yeah, either West Paulson yeah. or the Crossing at Carroll, one of the two. They were looking at those two sites. He said he did not, he has not made a determination on which one is better or which one he's leaning towards, but he is putting in the CIP some money to have a hawk signal in that area. Which would be what are they call the one that's by the stadium where you're crossing? That is more of a what's that one? I'm sure that's pricey, but well, I'll yeah, tell you, it works. works. Yeah, Three that years one works. Yeah, that yeah. the head will come yeah. also. I can't remember what one that one's called. I almost got run down going across Webster to the hospital, push the yellow light. Oh, yeah. Yeah, people don't. Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. You would think people would be more cautious. It's not a hospital. Yeah. 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 But I mean, if they, yeah, they don't have far to take them. You sure it isn't yeah. a hospital, Pam? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Looking for some no, revenue. <laughs> I stay out of the city. <laughs> um, any other public comments on biking and walking? Otherwise, we will take um most of our next, next meeting. I'm sorry, next meeting yep. is October 11th, and then a motion to adjourn. No motion to adjourn. Second. All was there. Opposed. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Yes, uh, right. did, you guys, I did find the answer for that e-bike. If you guys want to hear it, I guess. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um. So from what I understand, it's uh, you are allowed to ride it on the roadway. Um. You are not allowed to ride on roadways with the speed above 35 miles an hour. So if the speed's above that, you can't ride on that. Um. And it's not allowed on sidewalks or village trails. Um, and I have the ordinance as well, if you guys wanted that. This is section 7-7-238 seven dash seven dash is what it is. So. Is that for e-bikes or e-scooters, Jeff? Um, it's saying motor bicycle. So that's what they're classifying it as. Okay. Um, but yeah, I actually answered this question on the 19th. Uh, March 19th for, for a citizen. So I, I found it then. So, okay. So, is there so, separate errands for the scooters then? No, the scooters would fall into that, right? You're saying, Jeff? Yep. It looks like neighborhood electrical vehicles means any self propelled, self -propelled electric, electrically powered motor vehicle, excluding, excluding golf carts, that okay. has a maximum speed of 20 to 25 miles per hour. 
Um, it has, so that's what it's falling underneath. Two, three, eight. The ordinance section, Jeff, is 7-7238. Yep, yep. Okay. so it's Chapter 7. It's Traffic and Vehicle, Article 7, Bicycles, Motorbikes, and Similar Vehicles, Section 7-7-238, Neighborhood okay. Electrical Vehicles is what it falls under, and then the other one is 7-7-239, and that's okay. kind of the same thing. So, um, I, yeah, I, you really I, have to read into it, I believe, to to fully understand it but that's that's the answer that i i found so okay okay jeff i i didn't quite catch that first part about uh on uh, uh streets 35 miles an hour can't if it's on. over 35 miles an hour you're not allowed to bike on. use the electric yeah so the like yep the max hour. speed for is 35 miles an hour so like south ashland <laughs> avenue you're not going to be allowed on at all okay. What about uh, 172 for Beckerland out past the airport? Nope, that's over 30. Anything over 35 miles an hour is restricted, along with sidewalks and village trails. So I can't ride my bike on there? You can ride your bicycle. You can ride your bicycle all you want, just not an e-bike, from what I understand. You know what you think is 35? I think that was almost impossible. Because I think my aunt was in you know that's really not something that we're enforcing necessarily i guess um as long as you're following the rules of the road i think is the biggest thing and that you're safely driving i think that's what we're mainly looking for but if you're flying i mean some of these e-bikes move pretty good so um if you're flying through <laughs> something at 25 miles an hour when you shouldn't be in a certain area then maybe you'll have an issue but for me, you answered it. I think his concern was, can I be on the sidewalk, right, no. or road, and he, you answered that. So. No, I can't go on the trails either. Yep. 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 Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. We have access to the barns by going online, if I remember. Yes, you can. Yeah, come on over, please. Look at yep. the section. All right, we're done. Thanks for that. Bye, Bye. Now. Bye. I cut out a little. My internet all of a sudden got lost. We thought we lost. Yes, we were wondering where you went. We thought you got the sick of us. No, 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 no internet. I don't know what happened if I hit, and my computer was down to zero, it needed to be recharged. So, there you go. So, I didn't love us anymore. Yeah. I guess. Nope, I got back. I found it. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.